Hello, this is Brandon with another Clark Planetarium Dome from Home presentation. This is a 360 degree video, which means that you have control over where you look, just like in a real planetarium dome theater. At the time of this video's release, the Earth is scheduled to experience a solar eclipse in just a few days, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to share a short visualization to help you understand why this is such a rare phenomenon. Here in our planetarium model, I've set the time to a few hours before the August 2017 solar eclipse. You might remember that this was the beautiful total solar eclipse that crossed the entire United States. As you can see, we're close to the moon in a kind of over-the-shoulder view. Earth is in front of us, and the sun is directly behind. Now, of course the moon casts a shadow directly away from the direction of the sun, but you can't see a shadow against the darkness of space, so I'm going to add a red wireframe mesh that models where the shadow would be. If we zoom in closer to Earth, we can watch as I move time forward, the moon will move along in its orbit, and the shadow will move along with it and cross over North America. Anybody within this red mesh got to see at least some part of the sun blocked out by the moon. But those who were within the path of this much smaller cone, which I've added in green, saw the entire sun blocked out at some point, and they were treated to a truly spectacular sight. Those two elements of the moon's shadow have names. The small, total obscuring green cone is called the umbra, and the larger, partial obscuring red wireframe cone is called the penumbra. So just remember, if you're in the umbra, you get a total eclipse. If you're only in the penumbra, you get a partial. So that's the basics. Now let me show you why we aren't hit by one of these every single month. I'm going to greatly speed up time. The moon continues along in its orbit, loops back around, and is about to cross between the sun and the earth again about one month later. But what's this? The shadow has moved slightly up above earth, and for us here we don't see any part of the sun blocked out, but experience a totally uneventful new moon. If I keep doing this, the shadow is just going to get higher and higher. October, November, but then it does start moving down again until February 2018. The shadow hits us again, but if you'll forgive me, I gotta call this one pretty lame. If we zoom back in, we can see that the penumbra just grazed the bottom of the globe. So I guess that's fun for people living in Antarctica, but even then it's no total eclipse because the umbra still passes all the way below Earth. Continuing on, and as you may have guessed, the entire shadow passes below the Earth for a few months before it moves back up and hits us again, and grazes the South Pole again, and then grazes the North Pole on the next pass. It wasn't until July of 2019 that the bulk of the shadow made contact again. Let's zoom in to see what part of the Earth that went over. And mostly the Pacific Ocean. The Umbra didn't make landfall until the very end, so people in La Serena, Chile were treated to a total solar eclipse right at sunset. This repeating up and down movement of the moon's shadow is due to the moon having a slight inclination in its orbit in relation to Earth's orbit around the sun. In other words, the moon's orbit has a bit of a tilt, so things don't line up perfectly most of the time. Now I'm going to move time forward and show you another gotcha about solar eclipses. June 2020, and the shadow fully smacks the Earth, this time swooping across to Africa and Asia. Well, believe it or not, this eclipse didn't totally obscure the sun for anybody. Let's zoom back to see why. The problem is the umbra. Remember that it's a cone, so of course it has an endpoint. If we swing the camera around to the side, we can see that this time the umbra got frustratingly close to hitting the Earth but couldn't quite make it. Truly the saddest thing to happen in 2020. It came up short because during this eclipse, the moon was a bit farther away from Earth than it is during true total solar eclipses. The moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle, so this happens sometimes. We call this type of eclipse an annular eclipse, and the ring effect that it creates is pretty cool, but it still can't compare to the awesomeness of a total eclipse. Speaking of which, Let's finally move on to the next upcoming eclipse as of this recording. December 14th, 2020, and the shadow passes right over South America again. And check it out, the umbra is cooperating this time. 
total eclipse. Now that might not mean as much to you if you live in North America, but let me finish by moving farther into the future and show you a pass in April of 2024. I'm looking forward to it. If you liked this video, you should check out some of Clark Planetarium's other Dome from Home videos. We cover a range of topics from simple star watching to explanations about cool missions and space phenomena. 